So, buongiorno ragazzi, as they say here. Buongiorno. I couldn't say this phrase last season, so this year I'm twice as happy about saying it. We're opening the winter season in the Italian Alps. Oh my god, mamma mia! The ingredients of this journey are as simple as in a good Italian pizza. The base are the picturesque mountains, season it with sauce from inexpensive housing and shopping, add the topping from snowboarding in good company, and sprinkle with fresh alpine snow. It's gonna snow all night, but it should be sunny tomorrow. My way to the Italian Alps quite conveniently passes through Milan. It's convenient because, first of all, it's just a delightful city to spend half a day waiting for a transfer. Second of all, because you can fly here very cheaply using a low-cost airline, I snagged the tickets for 10 euros, but this budget-friendly trip quickly became cluttered with additional expenses. I could get to Lavinio by direct shuttle bus from the airport, but it runs once a day, costs 60 euros, and you need to book a ticket well in advance. And it doesn't pass the beautiful Lake Lecco. It's like a small copy of its more famous brother, Lake Como, and there's something super Italian about traveling along this lake by train. But after the train, I had to take two more buses in Tirano and Bormio to get to Lavinio. The second bus gained around half a mile of altitude and dropped me at a colder and snowier part of Italy. At the Foscagno Pass, the only road that connects Lavinio with the rest of the country, we met a monstrous traffic jam caused by those who had already finished skiing or snowboarding and were going back. The thought that the same fate may await me on the way back scared me a little. I wouldn't want to get stuck in a traffic jam on the way home, but let's not think about the future. Let's just enjoy the present. Welcome to Lavinio. <laughs> it's a small and pretty mountain commune with a population of 6.5 thousand people. It stretches for seven miles in a mountain valley in the very north of the country in the embrace of the Italian Alps in Switzerland but almost all the prices here are much lower than in the expensive neighboring country. Therefore, many Swiss people come here to ski, snowboard, or just relax on the weekends. And I came here for six days to open my snowboarding season. Of course, I didn't come to Lavinio to snowboard by myself. I flew to visit my friends from Georgia who also came to snowboard in Lavinio. As for housing, we are quite densely settled down in several small apartments, not far from the ski lifts. For example, there were four adult alpine skiing enthusiasts living in our 250 square foot apartment. The guys already snowboarded today, the apartment is crammed with equipment, and the vibe of this place reminds me of a men's snowboarding door. But no matter what kind of mess we make during our stay, we're going to need to follow the main Italian ritual before leaving, specifically sorting trash. They are very serious about that. What if we don't sort our trash? Oh, these eco-friendly Italians. But the coolest thing is that in Lavinio, until December 17 and in April, some apartments and hotels include a ski pass in the price of the stay. So the resort gives a bonus to some property owners, and they give this bonus to their guests. And that makes Lavinio a terrific place to open and close the season.
And now let's do a good old ski resort review. There are two ski areas on both sides of Lavinio, Caricello and Motolino. The lifts of the first ski area start right in town, which is very convenient, but in Motolino, we'll have to ride one of the ski buses. These buses run frequently and are free for all ski pass owners. Well, what can I say? It's Europe. Vlad won't say another word or show cool shots until you hit the subscribe button. The rentals near the lifts look pretty decent. You can rent snowboards and skis of the new season for 30 euros per day. To get to the lifts, you have to wait in a huge line, which is typical for Europe. To get to the first gondola in the Motolino ski area, we stood in line for about 20 minutes. And in this very line, in a very non-European way, someone scratched my favorite lens with ski poles. There are 70 miles of trail on both ski areas. By European standards, this is a rather modest number. Most of them are marked as red, but they are wide with good visibility and artificial snowmaking. And of course, in a half a day, all this snowmaking is usually ruined and the trails are full of ice and bumps. In terms of free riding, the resorts is pretty tame if you don't go far from the lifts on foot. Small sidelines and rather flat open fields where it's difficult to get lost or take a wrong turn. But in the lower part of Lavigno, there are forest areas where you can have a lot of fun snowboarding between the spruces on snowy days. And of course, the view is just stunning. Well, you get the idea. It's a real European resort in the real European mountains, and now I'd like to get real European snowfalls. While you wait for a snowfall, let me tell you about one extremely important Italian aspect. A giant portion of tagliatelle with parmesan costs 10 euros. Food prices here are average, but at the same time, well, you know what I mean. All kinds of macaroni and cheese treats are wonderful, even in an ordinary dining room at the top station of the lift. And in the city, inexpensive, yummy food can be found in the most seemingly unattractive places. For example, in this cafe, they display not only food, but also wine and cigarettes on the counter. It feels very Italian. For 15 euros, you get this hulk of a pizza. <laughs> In terms of the potential for insane overeating, it's almost like Georgia, which is great. So here, this cafe, Mr. Pizza, definitely scores 10 out of 10 in terms of fast food snacks. And of course, there is more than fast food here. There is a lot of decent and still not very expensive restaurants in the town. For example, right next to the lift, polenta with beef and cappuccino cost 12 euros. Basically, almost all food is delicious here, so for the most part, we didn't really bother and ate at the restaurant in our apartment building. It's a small family pizza place with the most Italian name, Bella Vista. It was packed almost every night, and there are reasons for this. Despite the rather slow service, while well, we're still in Italy, the pizza here is simply amazing. For example, I tried anchovy pizza for the first time in my life, and it was just magnificent. But Italian cuisine is not the only thing that makes tourists go outside in such beautiful winter weather. One of the main urban features of Lavinio is that the Italian excise tax is not imposed on goods on the territory of this commune, so it's literally a large duty-free zone. And this applies to everything. Food in supermarkets, ski equipment, and all kinds of electronics are 10 to 20 percent cheaper than the average in Italy. And not that it's some kind of land of eternal sales, but still duty-free trade in this region is a great bonus for all travel shoppers. All in all, Lavigno has its own special status in Italy. For example, when I took out my insurance, there was a small note in brackets, Italy except Lavigno Enclave. Which is not quite right because an enclave is a part of a country that is completely surrounded by the territory of another state, and you can easily go to Lavigno from Italy. As for whether it's worth taking out insurance at all during a trip to the mountains, my answer is definitely yes, because if you manage to fly into this place without it, you will have to pay a small fortune here. How much did you pay for all that? 
Ага. Это осмотр врача, рентген, э, снимки, э, бандаж и какая-то мальская на сдачу. Понял. Well, it's getting started. It's beautiful. What's wrong with these people? There was almost no snow yesterday and they were skiing. Today it's snowing and they just stayed home. Bam! Okay, we're crossing the road, and it's worse than just jaywalking. Come on, green light, come on, come on! Pronto, pronto, cross the road! Oh, damn it! Okay, let's just pick one line each. There's the track anyway. No, I think this one is better. Actually, there's no point in fighting over lines, since the forest area in Motolino is enough for the whole squad and even more. There's not a lot of people, the area is large, and it very conveniently leads right to the track, so we can keep snowboarding non-stop. Unless the lift decides to go on an Italian siesta, of course. You have to be incredibly lucky to get stuck on the lift during such heavy snow. I think if we spend another 10 minutes here, we'll have to make a room tour of this lift. <laughs> it's a little tight, but cozy. 6 out of 10. Jeez, finally! We've been stuck there for half an hour. That's how this miserable snowy day ended, miserably. This is insane. Do we still want to ride? We were actually going to call it a day, but there was so much snow that we couldn't resist. We grabbed the boards and went back into the mountainside. And then another tiny fiasco occurred. As you know, it gets dark very quickly in the mountains, but we realized it was time to go home only when we found ourselves in the dense twilight. So it's time for a midnight forest free ride, am I right? This day just keeps on going. Let's get out of here, what an Italian fairy tale. Ugh, oh, damn it! Hit me right on the nose! I wouldn't say this free ride is very exciting, but it's very beautiful. Do you know what it looks like? It's like we stayed late at work. We're home! The coolest thing is that it will last all night, and tomorrow it should be sunny. I love thick snowfalls, not only for obvious snowboarding reasons, but also because it turns any background into a real winter fairy tale.
but of course, it works best in alpine towns. So, about 1.5 inches of snow fell during the night, because look at these snowy car roofs and visibility is more or less good in the morning. And in these conditions, the large and open Carosello ski area becomes much more interesting. Damn, what do we do to deserve this much snow? We're just making tunnels. I think no one will enjoy watching us squeal and tunnel through fields of fresh snow for too long. Instead, since I'm something of a snowboard influencer, I want to remind you of some very important things at the beginning of the season. First of all, don't forget that there are other people riding at the resort. They are very serious about the culture of skiing here. Those skiers and snowboarders who cut people off are put in a cage right near the lift. So ride carefully here. Secondly, if you're going to free ride, even within the resort, don't forget to take avalanche equipment with you. Of course, use it correctly and check it regularly. Mandatory. Check. Is there a signal? Yes. And thirdly, always be rational and don't go where you shouldn't, or you can take someone rational with you who can cool down your enthusiasm. So maybe now after the snowfall we can ride a steeper track? В начале сезона нету нету мощной подложки на крутых участках добивает до до камней, во-первых, а во-вторых, достаточно лавина опасна. But when can we ride through this beautiful scenery then? Катнуть лучше всего в конце сезона. Весной тепло, солнышко светит, снега очень много и все все полностью доступно, все фрирайды можно катать. А пока катаем леса. Okay, just don't go down that way again. I can go wherever I want. I want to go there. No, don't go there. Stop, goddamn you! What a mean thing to do. I didn't expect you to do that again. Mamma mia, pizzeria! I thought yesterday's forest was lush, but this one just exceeds all expectations. Drop. All right. What a gorgeous forest. Let me through. Italian forest gate arm. This is insane. There's so much snow. I'm waist deep in this forest, so to speak. Oh, a classic move. To dig yourself out, and only now you can see the front of the board. The Carosello Forest area is wonderful, and you can end your ride not just near the ski lifts, but also in the town itself. It's so beautiful! The field of pure white snow in the town is gorgeous. How can you not love it? I don't know. So I really enjoyed snowboarding in Lavinio, and even though we didn't ride on the difficult lines, I had a great time riding through the woods in all this gentle, lush beauty. And I think in a nutshell, it would be appropriate to talk about what to do in Lavinio besides snowboarding, duty-free shopping and restaurants. Walking around Lavinio, you very quickly realize that unfortunately, or fortunately, this doesn't look like Disneyland at all. The place doesn't have a lot of tourist attractions or pretentious architecture, but you can still find a couple of small alpine joys here. First of all, there is a large Nordic sports center here. I'm talking about cross-country skiing and everything about it, and some bizarre hockey on the cross-country skis. To be honest, I've never seen anything like that. And if you like more traditional hockey, so to speak, there is also a nice ice rink with quite low entrance prices. And as befits a small alpine town, there is a small and very cozy spa center. Not that I know much about spas, but let's do a quick review. 
The entrance fee is 20 euros for 2.5 hours of swimming. I stayed there for three, and the employees didn't bother me about it on the exit. So to my surprise, there were very few visitors inside, so I was completely alone in the jacuzzi, saunas, pools, and recreation rooms. As a nice bonus, they gave me free tea and water to avoid dehydration. And in my opinion, the coolest thing in this center is the wonderful barrels of hot water outside, overlooking the Alpine Mountains. I probably spent a good hour and a half out of my three hours here. It's very fun to come here during the day because at this time everyone is riding and the spa is completely at your disposal, so to speak. So the Lavinio Spa definitely gets an A+. And just a couple hundred yards from the spa is perhaps the main natural heritage of these parts. The river that flows through the entire Lavinio Valley flows from a large and very beautiful lake of the same name. But unfortunately in the winter season, all the trekking trails with the view of it are not very passable, though quite flyable. The lake and the surrounding mountains look amazing, even in the monochrome winter season. I can only imagine how wonderful it all looks in summer when everything is green and all the trekking trails are open. Of course, I would really like to be on this mountain and observe it with my own eyes, instead of watching it through the lens of the drone, but as they say, it's better than nothing. And here in Lavinio, there is another interesting geographical place which I hope I'll have time to get to before the sky finally clouds over. The village of Tripale was interesting to me solely as a geographical box to check. If someone asked me where the highest mountain village in the Alps is located, I would probably think of Switzerland or France, at the very least, but no, it's right here in the northern Italian Alps. With a maximum elevation of 7,200 feet, this place is second only to Ascoli, which is in Spinetti, Georgia, but unfortunately there is absolutely nothing to do in the village, except maybe to have a coffee next to perhaps the highest altitude statue of Super Mario. I'd probably not advise you to go here specifically to check the box, because you'll pass by Trapale anyway on the road to Lavigno. Well, I'm literally sitting on my luggage, I'm packed and ready to go, and I decided to record my final thoughts about this wonderful place. Lavinio is very cozy, very small, you can walk the whole town in a couple of days. At the same time, it's not very spoiled by the influence of tourism, the vibe of a small alpine town still reigns here. At the beginning of the season, the trip turned out to be relatively inexpensive. I'll show you all my expenses over here. I still don't know the final figure, but it should be quite reasonable. Well, my bus is about to arrive. As always, thank you very much for watching this video and see you in the next one.